This month, we're not only counting down 10 of the most popular board games, but we're also going to be looking at the one-hit wonders for May 2018. We'll see which games have had people's attention all month, and which ones only caught people's eye for a day. Hey there, I'm Chaz from Pair of Dice Paradise, and welcome to this month's Top 10, which is based on the top 10 board games that have been getting the most buzz over on BoardGameGeek.com's hottest games list over the past 30 days. These are the games generating the most traffic and discussion on that website. And this month's list is really exciting. It's not really, it, no. Nine out of 10 games on this month's list have appeared on last month's list as well. So these are nearly all the same games that I've talked about in previous countdowns. And, and, I've, and I've talked about them a lot. So this month, in addition to listing the top 10 games, I'm gonna be including the highest ranking games that only appeared on the Board Game Geek Hotness list one time throughout the entire month, just one day. So I'm gonna mix these single appearance games into the overall list, and the only way to find out what they're gonna be is to get started at number 10. And coming in at number 10 for a second month in a row is Gaia Project, the game referred to by nobody as Terra Mystica for Millennials. In Gaia Project, players develop and grow their faction, each with unique abilities, as they must terraform neighboring planets into their home environments compatible with their faction. Gaia Project has appeared on our countdown eight times in the last year and appeared on Board Game Geek's hotness list every single day last month. But a game that only appeared on the hotness list one time this last month is the game that finishes overall in spot 140, Rajas of the Ganges. And my apologies for butchering that, which I'm sure I did because there's a lot of J's and G's in the middle of words. But in this dice-driven economic territory building game, players race against each other by developing their states into wealthy and magnificent provinces. Players must use their dice wisely and carefully plot where they are going to place their workers while never underestimating the benefits of some good old good karma. Success will bring them great riches and fame in their quest to become legendary rulers. Rajas of the Ganges came out in 2017 and is still available at some locations. So if this game sounds interesting to you, may be worth checking out. Spot number nine introduces the only game that's new to the countdown this month, Feudum. Feudum is an economic game of hand and resource management in a medieval setting. In the game, two to five players control several characters that roam the countryside, tending farms, taxing towns, and taking outposts in an effort to rise in power. Along the way, players will also have to compete to acquire coveted feudums, which increase their membership status in a half dozen different guilds. And if all of that wasn't enough, players must also pay homage to the king through military service or face the charge of disloyalty. This game is layered, really, really layered, and arguably pretty, pretty hefty. But even so, it's been really well received and has generated enough interest that it jumped up from spot number 25 last month to join us in the top 10 this month. Stepping back this month several spots to land in slot number 8 is Spirit Island, a cooperative game in which the spirits that inhabit a remote island must defend their home from colonizing invaders. Spirit Island was released in 2017 and has appeared in our countdown several times since then. But entering the countdown with one appearance this month is the game, not actually the game, but actually an expansion, which comes in at number 139 for the month, Totally Liquid, an expansion for Dinosaur Island. The Totally Liquid expansion allows the game to be played with up to five players and adds several new things to it, such as water dinosaurs, new park board extensions, executive worker meeples that give unique worker abilities to each player, a blueprints module that rewards players when they build certain park layouts, and PR events that create hidden scoring opportunities. The Totally Liquid expansion also continues the game's trend of incorporating such energetic, colorful artwork that you'd think that the 1990s arose from the grave and traveled forward in time just so could vomit up another box top masterpiece for us to enjoy on the box top lid. Appearing on the countdown this month in spot number seven is top 10 alumni Scythe, published by Stonemeyer Games. Now last month, we talked about the grassroots print and play variation of Scythe that's set in the My Little Pony universe called My Little Scythe. 
And in a surprise announcement on May 2nd, Stonemaier Games declared that they will be publishing an official version of My Little Scythe later this year. Now, while the references to My Little Pony in this version are replaced by a menagerie of other animals, it otherwise remains very true to the original print-and-play version developed by Hobie Chow. And with Scythe appearing on the top 10 so frequently, I wonder if it's only a matter of time before the official release of My Little Scythe joins it on our countdown. Hey there! We're at some random portion of the countdown, because I'm recording this later, but I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching and to remind you that videos like this are made possible by viewers like you who have been supporting Pair of Dice Paradise's crowdfunding campaign on PodPledge. Thank you so much for your support, every little tiny bit helps and matters, and is greatly, greatly appreciated. So, thank you! But for now, let's get back to what we're here for, the next number in our countdown. Whatever that is, because I don't know. I don't, I don't know, because I, 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 I don't know. Hip hopping its way back up a couple of spots to land at spot number six this month is Arkham Horror the Card Game, a game that's appeared on our countdown all but one time over the past year. And, flipping that around, a game that only appeared once on the countdown in the last year, Otis, reappeared on the hotness list on a single day this past month to come in overall at spot number 131. Otis takes place in the mid-22nd century after rising sea levels have engulfed the entire planet. Earth. Our planet. Survivors must then retrieve the debris of past civilizations from the ocean depths to build a new future for humanity. Because it takes place on Earth. Now, whether or not Otis makes a resurgence on the hotness list, it was nice to see it resurface again this month. The game that's held the middle position on the countdown for the past four months, the tile-drafting game Azul, returns again this month in spot number five, smack dab in the middle of the countdown. Now, Azul is the first abstract strategy game that I've seen make repeated appearances on the countdown since I started producing these monthly countdown videos last year. And while that is an interesting factoid, it is a terrible segue into the next game to have made a single solitary appearance on the list this past month, the one that comes in at spot number 130, Caverna Cave vs. Cave. In the two-player game, Caverna Cave vs. Cave, each player starts the game with only two dwarves and a small excavation in the side of a mountain. Over the course of eight rounds, they'll double their workforce, open up new living space in the mountain, construct new buildings and rooms in which to live, and dig for precious metals. And after eight rounds, players tally the points for the buildings they've constructed and the gold they've collected to see who wins. A Cave vs. Cave's appearance on the hotness list this month may have been related to a solo play challenge that was posted on the game's forums last month. And I'm going to add a link to the Cave vs. Cave solo challenge discussion in the comments below for anyone who may have this game and wants to give this solo challenge a try. Coming in at spot number four is the omnipresent Terraforming Mars, which is one of only two games that have appeared in the top ten every single month for the past year. Seems like every single convention that I've attended recently, I always see at least one game of Terraforming Mars being played. And another game that I've also seen making appearances at conventions a lot recently is Magic Maze, a game that made its own single appearance on the list this month, coming in at spot number 127. Magic Maze is a real-time cooperative game in which players must lead a group of characters out of a maze-like map. However, each player can only move a character in a single direction, so coordination between all the players is key to getting the characters out of the maze before time runs out. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, the players can't speak or give visual clues to each other during the game. This is a great game for groups, and it provides dozens of hilarious moments of frustration when everyone but you can see the move that you, and only you, can make in order to keep the game going. Retaining its spot in the top three for a third month in a row is Rising Sun, a game about honor, negotiation, and warfare in feudal Japan where the ancient gods have returned to rebuild their own empires. Now, due to its high-profile Kickstarter campaign several years ago and highly rated gameplay, I personally have heard a lot about Rising Sun over the past few months, and deservedly so. But another game that appeared on our list this month for just one day that I hadn't heard of before is the game that came in at spot number 124, Dungeon Alliance. 
Dungeon Alliance is a deck-building, dungeon-crawling, miniatures adventure game that allows players to send one to four different teams of adventurers into perilous dungeons in search of experience and treasure. At the start of the game, each player drafts their own team of four heroes and uses tactical movement and card play to overcome the dungeon's monsters and treasures. Now, each player starts with a unique 12 card starting deck that includes the starting cards from all four of their heroes. Rival teams may compete with one another to slay monsters or even battle one another for complete domination. The first printing of Dungeon Alliance sold out in March, but the game's publisher has stated that a second printing is planned really, really soon. The Seventh Continent dropped off of our top 10 completely for several months, but its triumphant return to our top 10 continues this month again in spot number two. The Seventh Continent is a cooperative choose-your-own-adventure exploration game in which players will have to use every ounce of wit and cunning to survive. And as of the time of this recording, The Seventh Continent has been nominated for at least seven different awards. And Speaking of awards, the game King Domino, last year's Spiel des Jahres award winner, was the next game on our list that made a single day appearance on the hotness list, finishing the month in spot 121 overall. King Domino is described as dominoes with a kingdom building twist. Players will collect tiles and arrange them to create sets of similar land types, each of which will score differently at the game's end. And if you enjoy King Domino, I also recommend checking out the slightly more advanced companion game, Queen Domino, which was released last year. And rounding out this month's countdown, once again in the number one spot is... Gloomhaven. A game of Euro-inspired tactical combat in a persistent world of shifting motives. Now, even though Gloomhaven retains the top spot in the top 10 for the month as a whole, its number one spot on the hotness list periodically is taken away a few days by other games. And one of those games that temporarily knocked Gloomhaven out of the top spot last month is the upcoming science fiction themed card game of intrigue and conflict, Imperius. Interestingly, even though Imperius reached the top of the hotness charts last month, this month it appeared on the list just one single day ending the month at spot 110 overall. And it, it makes me wonder if Imperius will find the gusto to return to the very top of the hotness chart later this year, closer to its actual release date. I don't know, but we'll find out in the months to come. But for now, there is your list of the top 10 most popular board games as of May 2018, with some extra one-hit wonders thrown into boot. For more top 10 countdowns, be sure to check out this playlist that's just full of them, and for more board game videos with news, reviews, and commentary, be sure to subscribe and check out the other Pair of Dice Paradise videos. Thanks, until next time, I've been Chaz Marler, take care. The only thing more 90s would be if the dinosaurs in the game were wearing neon suspended extreme parachute pants, which is a joke that I was certain I had removed removed from my script before before filming this thing. So, sorry. Entering the countdown with one appearance this month is the game at number 190, 39. But, entering the countdown with one...